Hi guys, I'm Simon from Ridge Monkey, and today I'm here to show you how to make a cracking little toad in the hole using our XL Connect pan. Now, let me talk you through the ingredients that we've got. We've got some little Aberdeen Angus sausages, we've got a batter mix and an egg to put that in with some milk, so we're gonna, that's gonna make our uh, Yorkshire pudding mix. We've got some potatoes, red onion, seasoning as always, and then some Bisto if we wanna make some gravy at the end. Right, so the first thing that we're gonna do isn't we're gonna make our batter mix, we're actually gonna start cooking our sausages. Now, I've got this pan over a medium heat. Uh, we're gonna open our sausages and just get them into the pan. We wanna start those cooking, so we're not gonna actually put them in from cold, put everything in and then let them cook together. We wanna to start those cooking. The oil's gonna start coming out of those and that's gonna provide us with enough oil in the pan to just help finish cooking once the batter goes in. So come back a couple of minutes, these will be done and I'll take you through the next step. Right, so these sausages, as you can see, they're cooking through, they're starting to get a nice little bit of colour, so let's move on to the next stage. Now, we've got a little bit of red onion here, so all I'm going to do is just very finely slice this. You know, we're cooking outside, we're cooking using these pans. I'm trying to make everything in the recipe into the one pan so we don't have to mess around too much we're using different pans and different cooking methods so also i've got some potatoes so we're just going to slice these up as well now these are the tin new potatoes already cooked nice and easy for you you don't have to worry about boiling potatoes on the bank now if you do want to you could also serve this with some mashed potato leave these out these don't have to go in so there are those. Right, let's flip this pan over. There you go, you can see these sausages are cooking through nicely. We've got that bit of oil, like I said, coming out of those. Now, as I stated, I've used some Aberdeen Angus beef sausages, but you don't have to use beef, you can use your favourite sausage, if you like pork and apple or anything, anything, a nice vegetarian sausage even, that will work well with this. So while that's cooking, we're gonna actually put in and just sprinkle over the top these onions, just so they start to cook down as well. Right, so as you can see there, our onions and our sausages are still cooking away in the pan. That oil's coming out, that steam's collected in there, so that's cooking those onions through. So we'll just close that back up and I will take you through the next step. Now what we've got here is a nice little batter mix. So the instructions at the back say add 200 uh, ml of water. I'm actually going to use milk. It gives a nice, rich, creamier texture. Uh, one egg. So we're going to crack our egg into uh, our mug. I'm going to add about 200 ml of milk. Now, I've said before in videos, if you think on one of these pints, we don't need to exactly measure it. One of these pints is 568 ml roughly five hands worth. So if I took a, each one of my fingers as roughly 100 mil. So I'm gonna take about two fingers down from where that is. There we go. And we're just gonna get that beaten in so we've got that yolk running through the milk. There we go, just give that pan a quick flick over. There you go, those onions are really starting to caramelize up now, look at that. While that's there, we'll add those potatoes to the top as well and close that back down. So the last thing that we're going to do is just open our bag of batter mix. Now you can use your favourite one. You can prepare your mix at home if you'd like to make it traditionally. Flour, egg and milk, but this makes it very, very easy to make on the bank. Now as I said, you don't have to use the milk like I did. It says that you can just use water. So I'm not going to add it all straight in because I want to get that mixed thoroughly. So first of all, we're just going to get that powder mixed through, which will start thickening it up, and then we'll add the rest of the powder. That is a good thing about these little thermo mugs as well. They really do make great mixing vessels, whether you're making an omelette for your eggs or whether you're making something like this or a little cake mix, you can really use these just to mix all your ingredients together as well. There you go, we'll add the rest of that powder into there now. Start off getting that mixed through. Okay, now I'll even last show you that. I think I've slightly undershot it on the milk, so what we're gonna do is just add a little bit more. That's a little bit too thick for a Yorkie mix, so it should almost be like a dropping consistency. So 
as I said before in other videos, you can never take out, but you can always add. So it's better to err on the side of caution, add a little bit more milk, we'll get that mixed through, and that will be perfect. All right, so let's have a quick recap of what we've done so far. In here, we've got our potato, we've got our onions, we've got our sausages cooking, the oil's come out of those sausages, so that's gonna help cook what we've got in here, our Yorkshire pudding mix. So we've got the oil coat in the top as well, so that's helping to create that non-stick surface. There you go, you can see there, those sausages, we've got that nice caramelization on the onions. So all that's left to do now is add our Yorkie mix into here. So we're gonna pour that over, making sure everything's nicely coated. And then we're just gonna close that lid up. So we've just put our Yorkie mix into the pan. We've closed the lid. I've just turned it down so it's over a lowish heat. That way we're not going to risk burning that uh, the batter that we've just poured into there. We wanted the nice coloration on the sausages and the onions, but we don't want the same with the batter. We want that to just cook slowly so it rises up. That egg in there is going to create that air and it's going to rise up nicely. So come back in a few minutes. We'll open it up and we'll see where we're at. Right, this has now been cooking for about five minutes. We've turned it over a couple of times just so we can keep it, you know, cooking each side. We want it to cook evenly the whole way round. So let's open it up, see the stage that we're at, and then we'll see how much longer it's going to take. And I'll talk you through that step as well. There you go. So look at that. You can see that that's cooking beautifully. That's really risen up. That Yorkshire pudding mix there, the batter has come through. It's filled all the gaps. We've got a nice caramelization starting on the top. You've got the bit of oil still on the top there that's helping to cook it through. Let's just flip it over and we'll check the other side. There you go. Now that's cooking as well. Beautiful. This is really coming along. Now you're not really in effect going to get that massive golden coloration that you do when you cook it in an oven, purely for the fact that we're not using an oven, we're using a pan. So it's got different heights, different textures, okay? So what we're looking for is, yes, that sponge to actually be cooked through and a nice golden color. And that's really not far off. Now, one thing that you will notice, I'm going to close this just so it carries on cooking. One thing you will notice is that as it cooks, you get bits of oil coming out, drizzling out the side of the pan. Now that is because as the, uh, the Yorkshire pudding mix proves and rises, the only thing that can actually leave the pan is the excess oil that's not needed. So it just pushes it out of the edges. So don't worry too much about that. I've just used a little cloth, clean the pan as we're cooking, and that just stops the pan from flaming up on the stoves. Wow, well look at that. This is nearly ready. We've got that lovely little crisp coloration on there. Let's flick this over. Let's see the other side. Wow, look at that. Yep, yeah, there we go. So our potato, red onion, sausage, little toad in the hole has finally cooked through. It's gone nice and crispy on the edges there. So the one thing that is left to do is make some gravy. Now you can buy a ready-made sachet of gravy from your supermarket or just carry a bit of Bisto. So we're going to use our thermal mug. We've got our fork to mix it with. This is ready, we're going to take this off, but what we're going to do is actually leave it in the pan just for a few minutes just to let that residual heat. I've got our kettle here, I'm just going to lift this up, put that on and turn the heat up. And in no time at all that kettle will ball and we're going to be able to make some gravy and finish off our toad in the hole. As you can see from the steam, kettle's boiled, so the only thing that's left to do now is just make up our little bit of bisto. Now we've gone for the onion flavour here, so we're just going to stick a few of these granules into our cup and pour in the water. What could be simpler than that? Now let's just check, see if that's thick enough. As always, that's too thick, so we'll just add a touch more water. So our gravy's made, our toad in the hole's ready, all that's left to do now is plate up. So let's open this up. Wow, you can see the steam coming off that already. I'm going to flip that onto our plate. And there we have our toad in the hole. Now you can see there, I've turned it up that way so you can see how the potatoes are caramelised. We've got the red onions in there, we've got the sausages in there. So we're just going to cut through. Now you could serve this with some veg as well if you wanted. It's entirely up to you. But you can see through this that that sponge has cooked all the way through there. We've got that sponge that runs through the middle, that's cooked in the same way that you would do through the oven. So let's just pour over our gravy. And there we go, a simple toad in the hole, bisto gravy cooked on the bank. Now what could be better during a nice cold autumn winter's day than something like this? <laughs>